Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Nicholas Polizzi, and I am the Suicide Prevention Pillar Lead here within the Department of the Navy, Office of Force Resiliency, or Don OFR, here in the Pentagon. We are very pleased, as part of our Mental Health Awareness Month webinar series, to welcome Chaplain and Commander Peter Dietz. Chaplain Dietz is the Director of Credo from the Naval District of Washington, um, and he has served with the Navy, uh, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, both on land and at sea. And Chaplain Dietz also had a combat tour in Iraq. So welcome, Chaplain Dietz. Thank you. We are thrilled to hear your perspective. As part of the Don's Mental Health Awareness Month uh, endeavors, we really want to talk about how folks can manage their own mental health, increase their own resiliency by doing what you might think is almost too easy, but it's managing stress before it manages you. So our webinar series is titled Tackling Stress So We Can Be Our Best. And that's really true in any walk of life. And stress affects us all differently. We all have different thresholds, different coping mechanisms, but we are thrilled to have you here, Chaplain Dietz, to tell, you about, to tell us about your perspective, uh, your experience managing stress, and then also advice you might have for younger or more junior uh, sailors and Marines out there. Um, because it all starts with managing stress. And that's what we know in the mental health world. And I think uh, it's, we're just trying to get the word out that it's wise to manage your stress before it becomes overwhelming. So we'll start today with like a real basic one, which is getting good sleep. We all know that if you're getting good sleep, your brain restores. If you're doing PT, it helps your body rejuvenate. But boy, that is a tough thing to do just in general life. If you've got stress going on, family issues, just regular family stuff, or especially if you're on deployment or you're out at sea, it's not as easy to get regular sleep as you might like. But boy, when you do, you're much more, you're much better postured to address other stressors that come your way. So how do you, when you're under stress or just in daily life, manage your sleep? What are some techniques you use? How do you prioritize sleep when you're already so busy? Um, well, that's, in terms of prioritizing, you just put it in your schedule um, as much as you possibly can and plan around it. Uh, ideally, the best thing is getting in a routine. Like if I know that I'm going to go to bed at this time every day, it kind of makes things go easier, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we get pushed out of whack. It's interesting that when we're stressed, we can't sleep. And when we can't sleep, it adds to the stress. Yes. And we get into this cycle. So one of the things that um, I've found has been very helpful is to try and get whatever is on my mind out of my mind, okay. if that makes sense. Um, and for me, sometimes it's noise. So listening to music or putting on a talk radio thing and setting a, a timer so it just turns off automatically, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully after I fall asleep. Um, that actually has been really helpful for me um, because for some reason my mind starts paying attention to the music or the words and not whatever was in my mind causing me not to sleep. And, you know, you mentioned exercise and PT is a part of the requirements, you know, in, in one's you know, Navy, Marine Corps uh, career. But, you know, oftentimes when you're stressed at work and you're working extra, you're working a full day and you're not getting home until much later than your typical hours or maybe you're doing an off cycle type of work. Uh, you get home and if you've got a family, you got to tend to them and you're busy and maybe you have to log back online at night. I guess... What I'm saying is oftentimes when we're stressed, if, especially if it's work going on, the very first thing to go <laughs> is exercise. And that's precisely the thing we need to do the most when we're stressed because we know the science is clear. The exercise, the endorphins are released. For a lot of us, we feel better. There's a runner's high, which is no joke. But, you know, it's often the last thing we have time for. Like, how do you manage that? Have you been in that situation? We're all in a glass house here. What's your thought on exercise and stress management? Uh, yes. So um, I will admit that I get out of the routine sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it can be very frustrating because it's, uh, sometimes it can be hard to get back into the routine. Um, 
but I think one of the greatest pieces of advice that was given to me is do something every day. Mm -hmm. No matter how short it is, five minutes, 10 minutes, as long as you just maintain the habit of doing something, anything. Um, for example, with running, my father-in-law and my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and, um, and my wife, like, they, they all said, hey, let's get together. Let's do the rock and roll half marathon yeah. you know, this past March. And so the whole, it became like a family thing. Yeah. Uh, we all got together and we were saying, hey, what did you do today you know, yep. to like, train? And so when you can do stuff with other people, I guess you know, we talk about accountability yeah. buddies, which is really helpful. Uh, my last duty station, um, they, they had a hit class in the morning, so I would, I, you know, I joined that, mm -hmm. uh, and that was really fun because, you know, here I am, this really old guy, uh, and I'm doing hit with 18-year-old Marines, yeah. and I didn't have to do what they were, well, the same level of weights, or yeah. um, I could do the same thing, but at my level of ability. Um, but still do it with them. Kind of like golf. You know, when you play yeah. golf, you can play golf with someone who's great. Um, I mean, you might be swinging more, but you can still do it together. Hit was one of those yeah. things we could do together. And I really enjoyed that. So, again, if you could have an accountability buddy mm. uh, or a group that you are a part of, uh, team sports yep. are a great way of doing PT, and it's fun. Mm. Why does PT not, you know, it doesn't have to be, not fun. Right, right. Um, I was, uh, my very first duty station, I remember one of the um, COs was all about having fun. And so group PT, you know, sometimes we'd go rock climbing. Yeah. They had a rock climbing wall on the base. Uh, or we'd play ultimate frisbee, yeah. which was one heck of a workout. Yeah. So there are all kinds of things you can do. So have fun with it. But the most important thing, do something every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. You know, it makes me think, I, you know, I know back when I was younger, you know, I was, and I was on my own for the first time and, and, and making my own meals, so to speak, and creating my, making my own food. And I realized like, boy, I probably shouldn't eat out every night and I don't have the money for that. And I just remember I'm thinking about breakfast and I'm not too ashamed to say I started off making a funfetti cake and have it last the week and I thought it would be like a coffee cake for the morning and it had zero nutritional value and then I graduated to well I have two bananas for breakfast mm -hmm. and then I you know and as I got older of course I realized boy I really need to take better care of my body and it's you know it's either good stuff in good stuff out or garbage in garbage out and for a long time it was garbage in garbage out we all know the value of nutrition and we got to fuel our fire and fuel our machine to be our optimal best, but it can be hard. I heard the expression that sometimes the breakfast of the champions is a monster in a cigarette. Well, that won't last, <laughs> you know, that, that, that won't sustain you, especially if you want to have a great career and, and do well at work. How do you approach even now, but when you get busy and you're stressed, that's, again, that's the time you need the most nutritious, the best fuel for your body. What can you suggest to sailors and Marines out there? And what have you experienced from your, from your own life? I am not a nutritionist, mm -hmm. so please do not take any advice mm -hmm. from me on nutrition as mm -hmm. being, oh, Chaplain Deet said. Right, right. Um, but I think with nutrition, what I have found and experienced, um, I know what... Just like you said, we all know what we need to do to eat healthy. Yep. Um, there's plenty out there. There's plenty of resources. There's plenty of worksheets, I mean, all kinds of stuff. What I have found is I do not eat healthy mm. unless I meal plan. Okay. So I need on the weekend, I will sit down on the weekend with my wife, uh, quite honestly, she probably leads the charge on this more than I do, but it's still a team effort. Yeah. Um, what do you like? What do I like? And we come up with a meal plan for the week. And then we shop to that meal plan. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have in the house. We have in the house the food for our meal plan. And we prep. And that's what we do on the weekend. We sort of prep. You, you had your fun... What was it? Funfetti cake. Funfetti cake, cake right? So to bad. last you through the week. Yeah. Um, so that basically that's what we did. We would prep our meals for the week. And boom, then it's done. Mm -hmm. And save so much money 
Because, of course, if you didn't prep a meal, what do you do? You go out. Right. And, I mean, instantly you're spending $12, $15. I mean, even our galley is $12, $15. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's a lot of money over time. Uh, so meal prepping, I think, is the answer. So it's going to keep you on track. You'll be thinking about it in advance, and you'll have the food in the house that you need. So I think that's, that's the secret. Yeah. That's the secret to eating healthy for me. Yeah. Well, I'm sensing a theme, too, of there's, in your answers, they, there is, again, some level of self-accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, to meal, to meal prep, to meal plan, you've got to sit down and do it. <laughs> and maybe you've not done it before, so I know that on, on installations and bases, there's tons of resources to help you plan that sort of thing and, and, and to talk to folks to make sure you, you kind of know how to do it. But it's incumbent upon us to ask the right questions or else you're going to be kind of flying blind. You know, same with somebody selling you to put, you know, having accountability to put your phone down or go out in PT and do it with others. There is a, a certain level of inside us that we have to leverage <laughs> because to your point, we're adults and very, you know, although we're, you know, in the military and we're often told what to, what to do and where to go and how to do it, a lot of this stuff in terms of stress management, it falls on us. It falls on, on our shoulders. So what are your thoughts on financial readiness, what can people think about as they plan their finances, just kind of broadly, and perhaps your own experience and advice for, for younger uh, sailors and Marines? Uh, so my father always uh, pounded into me, save, 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 save. The yep. early you start saving, the more money you'll have. When you get older, most older people say they wish they had started savings more. Um, and did I listen to my father when I was young? No, I didn't. Do I wish I had started saving earlier? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the lesson that I would like to pass on, do the math. That's what I would say. Do the math, mm -hmm. and you'll see that you can actually, saving a very small amount of money over a long period of time, hit a million dollars in retirement. Um, but the temptation is what we want right now. Right. A lot right. of times we can't see... You know, when we're in our 20s, uh, we can't see into the, the future and understand our wants and needs at that point. Like, and everybody else has one, and I, I deserve it. I want a car. I want the new iPhone. Mm -hmm. I want whatever. Um, and so that's what I want to say about money here is money reveals what we value. Mm. And I think it's very important for people to think about what do you value? What's important to you? and create a budget. And your budget will be around your values. And if you value your, you know, thinking into the future and planning for your retirement, even at 20, you're gonna save for that. Yeah. Um, if you value just sort of, you know, the immediacy, you know, the here and now, well, you're gonna put your money there. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's wise, but people need to really think hard. What is important to them? And again, be disciplined about, okay, well, I'm going to make a budget now. I'm going to spend, like, m my wife likes clothes, right? To me, I don't, it, right. I'm not as passionate mm -hmm. about that. Right. Um, but I'm passionate about other things. Sure. And so, you know, she'll want to spend some money on that, and I want to spend some money on this. And when we put together our values, one, it reveals her values, my values. But then as a couple, we can also see, well, what do, what do we value as, as a family? Yeah. And when we put our budget together, we're putting our budget according to our values. And whether it's saving, whether it's charitable giving, um, whether it's self-care, yeah. you know, all of these types of things and how much we're going to put in each one of those categories. Jacqueline Dietz, you talked about something about when uh, folks are trying to get into a new exercise routine or you know, just trying to increase their PT. And one of the things you suggested, which I think is right on the money and the literature, the scientific literature tells us you're absolutely right, is when you do something with others, when you have a community, it just makes most people feel better <laughs> and helps people feel more engaged and part of something bigger than themselves. Healthy relationships, be that, you know, a romantic one or just with friends or family or whatnot, it's critical in, to maintain one's mental health, I think, and help bolster somebody's resilience so that when tough times do come, 
were a little stronger to fight them off and to be able to, to manage it and to bend and not break, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But one of the tough, well, I would say maybe tough's not the wrong, is the wrong way to put it, but one of the realities of being in active duty, a sailor or marine, is you're going to PCS, you're going to go to new duty stations. What advice would you have for a sailor or marine getting ready to go to a new duty station or if they're newly joined uh, enlisted or officer about the value of finding a community how to do and how to do it and, and what it's meant to you? Uh, no, I think this is the most important thing. Uh, of everything that we talk about, I think having uh, some strong relationships that are meaningful, are reliable, um, it's, I think it's the most important thing that we, we can do. That would be my number one thing to do. But it is sometimes, especially in our uh, business of being in the military and PCSing frequently, sometimes it's hard to maintain those relationships and hard to start uh, new relationships. Um, perhaps I think it might be harder for our family members that come with us, mm. um, for our spouses. I'm going to work. You know, my spouse, when we PCS, well, she's got to find a new job and, yeah. you know, a new group. And uh, so for lots of us, it's really hard. But I do think it's the most important thing that we should be very intentional about, whether it's uh, creating new friends at the new location um, or maintaining friendships uh, that, you know, we, we've had over time. Okay. Um, and, I, and I think a balance of those are important. I think whenever we go to a new duty station, we should make new friends at that duty station. Um, but I also think it's important to nurture old uh, relationships. Yeah. Um, from my experience, the, I think the closest friends that I have in the military are from my very first duty station. Okay. Uh, or from when I came, first came in, uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. Mm. Um, going through the Chaplain Basics course. You know, I'm close friends with a lot of those folks. Um, and it's interesting how those relationships kind of stick with us over time. Yeah. But we need to nurture them. Um, and I think it's very important to have friends that will listen to us, will understand us, will mm -hmm. challenge us, and um, we can do the same for them. And it is not easy. And a lot, what I have seen, a lot of times people get discouraged because their friends let them down. Uh. Why don't you have any friends? Well, I don't trust them. I can't trust them. Mm. And that's a challenge. Yeah. That's a challenge. And to, but I, I think some of it takes practice. Some of it takes risk. But I think it's an important risk to take uh, in terms of developing relationships and friends. And also, because it's risky and hard, when you do have a good relationship, keep it. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially with technology today, it's a lot easier to maintain friendships. Oh my gosh, so many people, their friends are, you know, through gaming. Right. And at first, uh, I was like, what? Um, and I was sort of like, that can't be healthy. But for a lot of people, you know, they're, if the relationship can be authentic, mm -hmm. why, why not? Um, but I think that's the key, an authentic relationship okay. where people truly try and understand you and care about you, and it's mutual. Yeah. Um, and yes, you will get burned by friends. Mm -hmm. I promise you. You will have a friend that lets you down. Um, you may have a family member that lets you down, uh, a spouse that lets you down. It happens, yeah. um, but this is why you know we have things called forgiveness mm -hmm. and grace. Um, maybe some things aren't forgivable. Well, that's a different conversation, but um, I think it's, it's okay to go into it knowing that I'm gonna have this friendship. I know that I might get hurt. I might do something that hurts the other person, but I mm -hmm. wanna be committed to it. I want to get past that. I wanna forgive and maybe often relationships go deeper and become more helpful when you've worked through those hard times. So don't let the hard times discourage you in a relationship. It could be the thing that makes the relationship even more helpful and beneficial to you in the long run. I see, I see. Now, what if I'm 
a you know a, a junior officer, junior enlisted. I'm kind of new to the Navy. Maybe I'm kind of this is my first time out from my parents' house. I'm off on my own. And I'm not great at making friends. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know where to begin. What advice would you have for somebody that you know steps across onto the installation, and their their day is over? Uh, now what? Because everything I agree 100 percent with with everything you said about about friendships and the value. How, on especially in the military, especially in the Navy, how do you how do you start? Where do you start? Yeah, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, and it probably depends on where you are because mm -hmm. every location is going to be different. Um, I mentioned my last uh, command, they had hit in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that was just something the base was offering. Hit. Uh, all right, I'm going to go to hit. And the, lots of people were there, and it was the same people that went every day. And you can start building relationships there. Um, single sailor program. You know, what a great place. They're, they do such cool stuff. Okay. You know, trips that they go on or movies they go see. And so sign up. You know, go on a ski trip or, I don't know, go hiking. Um, the Chaplain Corps, we have something called Credo. We do mm -hmm. retreats. Uh, and some of them they do, like, really fun stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, down in Mid-Atlantic, they're going hiking in mm -hmm. the Appalachians. Um, so uh, here in D.C., we have resiliency retreats. We just spend a weekend. And what happens is the people that go, they form their own little community mm -hmm. of those, you know, 12 to 20 people. Yep. Um, and sometimes those relationships um, continue on. Yep. So just finding places where you can do things with other people and healthy things, yeah. healthy things, yeah. um, where you can uh, meet people and uh, do things. A lot of uh, locations will have sports teams, yeah. right? Community sports teams. You know, get on a rugby team or a softball team and, you know, these types of things I think is great. Um, finding organizations to volunteer with. Mm -hmm. You like animals, maybe. You don't like people. Well, go volunteer at the animal shelter mm -hmm. uh, and take care. And then sort of there's a group of people there that will have, you know, similar interests. Um, or, you know, of course, you know, highly recommend, you know, people of faith, mm -hmm. you know, join a church. Uh, or a synagogue, or um, you know, find your community of faith, because m many religions they're all about forming community, yeah. and there's an importance on community, and so getting engaged with that is a great place to find relationships. Yeah. So again, it depends on where you are, but there are tons of opportunities where you can you know have healthy places to engage with people, and you know. See if you find someone that you click with and, yeah. you know, have a maybe a lifelong relationship with, friendship. And, you know, I just would get your opinion on the use of, you know, drinking alcohol. I mean, I like a beer as much as the next person. But I do know that, you know, a lot of times alcohol is associated as a depressant. It can actually have a negative effect on our lives and maybe sometimes lead to a behaviors that we come to regret. How do you, as a chaplain, and I guess just as a, as a naval officer, approach uh, drinking, healthy drinking, uh, appropriate and in moderation? What, what's your take on that? Sure. Um, and again, th over the course of my life, I've, I've experienced lots of different things. Um, you know, in the college that I went to uh, was a heavy drinking college. Um, they didn't do drugs then, but it was, it was a drinking school. Um, so... And my faith allows me to, you know, to mm -hmm. have a drink. It's not prohibited. Um, but you're right. I, I think if, if alcohol is used for um, mitigating stress or you think it's going to help you be more resilient, I don't think there's a lot of evidence for that, yeah. quite honestly. Um, I think that, you know, having a drink is a fun social activity. Mm -hmm. um, and in my personal life, that's, that's when, you know, I've had my drinks. Mm -hmm. But alcohol can get you into a lot of trouble. Real fast. <laughs> Real fast. Yeah. And yeah. you can look at all the statistics. When people get into trouble, mm -hmm. most often... I would say, you can look up the data to be for sure, I would say alcohol is present. Yeah. Um, so that's something always to keep in mind, that too much of this is, is not going to be good. Uh, using alcohol to fall asleep, no, it's not going to be good. 
Um, what is drinking in moderation? Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Again, my first tour. Oh, but chaps, I only have a six pack, you know, every night. You know, that's, that's not a lot. Yeah, that's a crap load. I'm sorry. Right. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is a lot. But in the culture, maybe not. Perhaps, yeah. So, but, it's still um, a lot. but in terms of science, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. And that's not healthy. One of the things that I find very encouraging is the the sailors, the younger sailors, mm -hmm. Marines that are coming in now. Yeah. I don't think they drink as much. I don't think they're interested in alcohol as much as you know some of the older folks are. Um, and there's you know a big industry now that's just just beginning to start mm -hmm. of non-alcoholic distilleries. Yep. Um, so I think that's really exciting that there can be you know continue enjoying some of those beverages, but without the alcohol that causes problems um, within us, both physiologically as well as you know socially, if we're drinking too much. Chaplain Deeds, when I think about mental health, I kind of equate it to like your car's check engine light. Where can somebody go for help? You know, where can they get the oil change versus the whole engine re redone? Where can they go for a check-in? Um, I know they can go to their chaplain for sure, so please tell us about that. But what other resources are out there? And do you agree that in the value of kind of getting on your stressors early, tackling them, for lack of a better word, early is a lot better than ignoring them and pushing them down until maybe it's too late. So, uh, and this goes back to what I had mentioned earlier, the most important thing that I think we can do is develop great friends. Okay. And because I think that's just so important, and great mentors. Mm -hmm. um, I have some amazing mentors in my life uh, that I've had for a lot of, most of my career, and my mentors, one of the things that I love about them is they are not like me. Mm -hmm. They see the world differently yeah. than me. Um, they're chaplains and they have different theology than I do. Because why, why I think the friends are important is when you talked about the check engine light going mm -hmm. on. Well, a lot of times we need something to tell us that. Yeah. Our check engine light needs to be looked at. And... Sometimes we can do it ourselves. I'm not sleeping. Mm -hmm. I'm not motivated. Okay, that's a check engine light. Okay, I, I know I need to do something about that. But sometimes we don't see it. Mm. Um, and, you know, if we're married or in a relationship, some, maybe our spouse uh, can give feedback. Um, but if we're not, I think it's really important to have those friends or mentors mm. who can, we can go to. And I did this just recently. I went to another chaplain because... I was having a personal issue with grief, mm. and I was concerned because I didn't feel like I was grieving properly. Mm. Grief is very complex. Mm. Everybody grieves differently, and even the same person can grieve differently in different situations, which was what I was experiencing. Yep. And so I was concerned. So I went to another chaplain who is a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I went to the chaplain as a mentor, well, I guess as a chaplain. I was like, I'm concerned. Like, is this a problem mm -hmm. that I'm not grieving the way I think I should be grieving? And they said no. And it was great. So we had this conversation like, you're good. Mm. Um, so number one, I think it's important to have relationships with people that you can just sort of check in. Am I off? Yeah. Do, like, they are I, your check engine light in right. a sense. Yeah. Am, I, am I drinking too? Do you think I'm drinking too much? Yeah. You know, of course, now you want to have the right friends because you're like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, yeah. Not enough. <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, but again, and that's where mentors, maybe mm -hmm. more than a friend, can like be a good check um, who's not you know, supervising you and evaluating but can give you honest feedback. Yeah. Um, so that's that. The other thing that I think is really important is to understand that life is not always good. Yeah. And we have our high moments and we have our low moments. Mm -hmm. And the way that I have lived my life is when I'm in a uh, low moment, I keep remembering and I keep telling myself that I'm going to get out of this. Mm. This is a period of time in my life that will pass eventually. Yep. I just have to get through it. One step in front, one foot in front of the other, one step at a time, uh, I will get through this. Um, and I'll get to another high. When I'm in the highs, 
I'm always like, oh my gosh, there's going to be a low coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live in the moment yeah. and enjoy this, but I'm going to prep for what you were talking about. Prepare myself for those hard times that are going to come in the future. Um, people I love are going to die in the future. I need to prepare myself for that. Yeah. Um, I may be faced with my own mortality. I mean, we're in a dangerous business uh, being in the military. I need to prepare myself for that. Am I ready for that? Um, and when we're, when we're in a good place and when we're not under an immense amount of stress, uh, these are the times we need to be thinking about that. What do I need? Um, I love being in the sea services because it's one of the best analogies. Once you go to sea, you only have what you took with you. Yeah. Um, you can't go, you know, pick something else up. You're at sea. You've got what you've got. Um, you know, you've trained for this time, uh, once you deploy, you know, it's now it's now you're doing it. So really be thinking about that and preparing yourself, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually for when we face those hard times, I think is really important. Uh, and the same thing, like I get really frustrated when uh, people say, oh, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to fight this battle on my own. It's my battle to mm -hmm. fight. Well. We're, that's not how we're taught to actually fight wars. Right. We fight together. We fight in teams. Um, the Marine Corps, the Marines are never alone. They're always, you know, in a fire team, you know, yeah. the smallest unit. Um, and they just build upon that, you know, and air supports and, you know, logistic is supporting. Like, everybody comes together to support. Same thing in the Navy. Um, I was just inspired the first time I was on a ship. And the ship pulls in and everybody doing their job. Mm. No one person can bring a ship into port. Yeah. It's everybody doing their part. And so nothing we do uh, in this job we do on our own. We all do. We all work together. That's what makes us more powerful. So why should our personal lives be any different? Right. Why are we fighting our personal lives alone? when we have so many resources that are surrounding us that give us the advantage to tackle whatever the challenge is that's facing us. Yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, friend, psychologists, chaplains, mm -hmm. uh, friends, mentors, I mean, just all of the different resources that we have. Yeah. Um, so my highly recommend, you know, take advantage of the resources around you, don't fight any battles alone. You don't need to. Right. And you're going to have a much better chance of success and of victory if you include the biggest arsenal you can of resources who are going to fight alongside you right. uh, to tackle those problems. How do you engage and how do you teach others to be, get comfortable having these hard conversations? Because we know asking somebody about suicide isn't going to ha uh, make them think about committing suicide or dying by suicide. It's not related. The science is clear on that. Everybody's, not everybody, a lot of people are afraid. How do we get over that? What's your advice? Well, I, I think it's just practice. Okay. I think it's practice. Actually experience it. Um, I, again, it was an interesting experience for me when I was asked mm -hmm by someone if I was thinking about suicide, mm. right? So I'm the chaplain and here I was, I was sitting in the food court, I was having a cup of coffee, I was mad at the world, mm. it was not a good day for me, we've had bad days, this was a bad day for me. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I was all by myself, um, drinking a coffee alone and uh, another sailor came up, sat down uninvited across from me mm. and said, chaps, you're sitting here by yourself. You look pissed off at the world. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Are you thinking about suicide? Wow. I know, right? <laughs> that was my reaction too. I was like, what? How'd you take that? So I had so many different emotions going through my mind at the same time. Part of me was like, yes, mm -hmm. you paid attention. <laughs> like, this is what we want to be doing. Ask the question. Yes. And so I was really excited about that. And then of course the other emotion simultaneously was, oh my gosh, he's asking me if I'm thinking about suicide. Yeah. I, I wasn't, um, 
but it was like, what am I projecting to the world? And if a chaplain mm -hmm. is sitting in a public place looking like he's thinking about death yeah. uh, and his own death, then he's probably not going to be a very good chaplain, right? People, hey, chaps, you got a minute? Like, yeah. No. Um, and so it was really helpful for me to be more self-aware um, at, at the moment. And, um, and then I was also very thankful that he cared yeah. because I know that it's not an easy question to ask. And he had the courage to sit down and to ask me a really hard question. And that showed that he truly cared. And that meant so much to me. Um, and so I thanked him. I said, you know, thank you very much for asking me that question. And um, I am not thinking about suicide, but I'm really, really upset right now. Mm -hmm. And this is not the place for me to be upset. Yeah. You know, he helped me realize that. Yeah. And, um, and so, but I just, I, I really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. So asking the question, is it scary to ask the question? Absolutely. Is it uncomfortable to be asked the question? Possibly, mm -hmm. um, especially if you are thinking about suicide, it, who knows? I mean, maybe it's uncomfortable, maybe it's a relief, I yeah. don't know. But uh, like I said before, we need to do uncomfortable things and scary things when we care about each other. And, but that's the thing that's more important, yeah. is caring about each other yeah. and not thinking about you know, how this is going to affect me. It's like, what can I do for this person? Yeah. And, um, and sometimes maybe we're not the kind of people that want to hear somebody else's story. Um, and that's okay, but you can see that somebody's got a problem. You can say, hey, it looks like you need help. You know, can I, can I take you, walk with you over to medical or walk with you to the chaplain's office mm -hmm. or walk with you to Fleet and Family? Or just you walk know, with you. Yeah, just, you know, yeah. or, you know, do you, just make some time. Yeah. If you don't have time, you can just connect him with somebody else. But don't mm -hmm. ignore the situation. Yeah. I think that's the big message that we want to get across. I know that I'm trying to share that with as many mm -hmm. people as possible. Don't, uh, well, in the Safe Talk you know, class, we say don't miss, dismiss, or avoid. Yeah. You know, there are lots of reasons why we might miss it or dismiss it or avoid asking about suicide. Um, but it's really important not to do that because... You just don't know unless you ask the question. Are you thinking about suicide? Mm -hmm. You know, your behavior, your actions, your yeah. attitudes. I mean, it's, you know, in line. Um, I know that you're suffering. And, um, you know, when people are suffering, sometimes they think about suicide. And it's okay. I love the younger generation right now because they seem much more comfortable yeah. uh, talking about mental health issues and... Uh, including suicide, and I think mm -hmm. that's great. I think the culture in our military service is changing, yeah. where people realize that, hey, it's okay to talk when we're thinking about suicide because it happens so much right. that it's you're not, you know, the white elephant. You know, it's, right. it's, it's real. People have those thoughts, and it's okay. Yeah. We can work through it. We can get help and move past it most of the time. Yeah. Um, and if people have an issue that's like super chronic, well, that needs to be addressed too. Uh, and that's okay. Um, so I'm really, I'm really excited of what I see in the military in terms of a, of a momentum starting to move uh, in the direction of being more open to talk about suicide mm -hmm. and mental health issues. But there's still clearly a long way to go. Yeah. And the more people that can just Start doing it, start talking about it, and practice talking about it, um, you'll see what it's like. And I think it'll become more easy over time. Yeah. And, we'll, and we'll, we'll feed this culture of more openness in talking about these issues and have a healthier community, mm -hmm. which, is, which is our goal. What are some, what's some advice you might have to folks that are listening or watching? How can they create a culture of checking in on each other, of community, of caring, of, of, of just saying, hey, how you doing? Because that, hey, how you doing, may be and often is the, the moment where they can learn more about somebody that they may be suffering and maybe they can help and intercede. How do you, how do you create that? You know, how, does, how does one go about doing that? What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts? Um, 
Well, again, like um, a lot of the stuff that we've talked about, creating new habits, new routines, mm -hmm. new things that we do. Um, one of the things that I've been doing more intentionally uh, in this particular tour that I've on mm -hmm. um, is asking people more who don't work with me, but yeah. I work with. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, whether it's a different in shop or S shop, or, um, just asking them, like, how does what I do impact what you do? Or uh, tell me about how does this process work? Um, I just went through the process of hiring a new um, GS uh, position. And sometimes it was very frustrating on my end, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what the HR people had to do. So getting mm -hmm. curious about, well, what's going on in your job? Yeah. You know, what, what, are the, what are the things that you find challenging and are struggling? And so having a better understanding of other people's challenges besides our own and maybe through doing that, we can find ways of working collaboratively better. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I do this, it's going to be more, it's going to cause problems for them. Yeah. But I didn't realize that. You know, I thought if I did this, it was being helpful, but that wasn't helpful. Um, checking in on people. I mean, you talked about, you know, one rank up, one rank down. I think it's really important to check up also on the people that just PCS'd. Yeah. Right? Our friends that are now in the new duty station. Because, boy, that's a yeah. crack, isn't it? You know, they've gone to the new place, then they don't know anybody. Yep. How cool. Like, so their friend from their last command said, hey, how's it going in your new mm -hmm. place? Um, and just sort of checking in with those folks. And, you know, sometimes I'm not as good as, at that as I want to be. But, you know, and that's the other thing. Okay, so we didn't do what we wanted to do, but... We can try again, yeah. right? And try, you know, keep keep trying to do better. Um, and you know, we all can't be perfect. We all make mistakes. Um, but the more we keep trying to be in touch, and you know, and say, "Hey, Nick, what's going on? Yeah. You know, now I'm in my new place, and you know, how did that video go that we mm -hmm. did? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, what's your next new project? I just think it's really good just to check in, and yeah. I think people appreciate that. Would you call that just a good leadership tenant in general, checking in on people? Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, that could be a leadership thing. I mean, I'm just thinking that it's just a human thing. This is what people do yeah. uh, with each other. They look out for each other. They check in with each other. Yeah. And, um, and the more that we do that and the more people who do that, the stronger team that we'll have. Got it. Well, Chaplain Deeds, this has been fascinating and illuminative and very helpful. I was wondering if you had any final words or final thoughts as we conclude today's uh, discussion on tackling stress and getting ahead of stress before it gets to you. We've talked a lot about community, talked a lot about some specific things we can do in terms of diet and exercise and getting connected. But any, uh, any final thoughts for the, for the folks that are watching? So, and again, I'm not, you know, when we talk about nutrition, we talk about mm -hmm. Um, you know, exercise and things. I'm not a professional on this. I'm speaking from my personal experiences, yes. what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me. And one of the things that has rung true for me in my life is sort of the everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not really everything, but doing th having balance, yeah. bottom line. Is there balance? Do you have a work-life balance? Do you have a... You know, I have a, a plaque, you know, work like a captain, play like a pirate. You know? oh, yeah. um, but just balance. I think it's important for us to have balance in our life and in all aspects of our life. And to think about that, self-reflect. Do I have balance in my life right now? Mm -hmm. Am I spending too much time on my career and not enough time on my personal relationships? Am I spending too much time doing work and not enough time playing? Because playing is important. Mm -hmm. Recreation is important. Having a hobby outside of Navy Marine Corps mm -hmm. is super important because we are not going to be in the Navy for our whole lives, right. hopefully. <laughs> Every one of us is going to be asked to leave at some point. Right. We either age out, we don't fail to select or promote, um, whatever it may be. Right. Every one of us is asked to leave, but we still have so much more life to live. 
Right. So have you been thinking about that? Do you have balance in your life or is it all Navy Marine Corps? Mm. You know, what are you doing outside your life? So I think that's important. And the other thing that's important too, when we get off track, because we will get off track, we need to recalibrate. Mm. What do you mean? We need to, like, is our compass pointing towards true north? Right? What is our north star? Yeah. Um, and we need to know what it is, and we need to sometimes just recheck, all right, am I going the direction that I want to be going? Because there are times when we get distracted. Mm -hmm. Stressors of life, stressors of work, stressors of other people, whatever it may be, relationships, money, yeah. all those things that we talked about may knock us off course. And we need to go back to understanding what is our true north. Um, do we need, to, like, recalibrate? Uh, I think warrior toughness talks yeah. about that. Recalibrate. We need to take some deep breaths right now. All right, what is the mission? Where do I need to be going? And let's yeah. get back on track. A self-check. Self-check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. And so, again, going back to values, we talked about that earlier. These are our North Stars. Mm -hmm. What is important? What is your purpose? And are you following that path? Are you making decisions based on what you value? Because when we're on that track, I think we can handle a lot more stress. Yeah. Because we know that it's moving us in the direction we want to be going yep. and the things that we value. Fabulous. Chaplain Peter Dietz, thank you very much for being part of the Department of Navy's, the DON's Office of Force Resiliency, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month webinar interview on uh, tackling our stress to be our best insights from the force. Truly informative. Thank you so much, and uh, good luck with your PCS. And thank you. Much obliged. Hey, I really thank enjoyed you. my time with you. All right. Always. Thank you.